All right, so um, you're going to be meeting Naya. Yeah. She's our largest female that we have okay. here at the aquarium. Um, she's also helping take care of our newest cat that was born mid-December. Um, she's kind of like the nanny. Right. So um, Puigi is the mother. They're swimming together right there. And but the little one is, is a lot darker, so I guess they turn whiter as they grow. It's a, exactly. It's a natural defense mechanism because they're usually uh, born in murky waters and like estuaries and stuff like that. So um, when they are born, they really blend in with that dark murky water. And as they get older, they usually tend to spend more time in the Arctic around the ice. And so that's why they lighten up a lot right. of times as well. So, so climate change must be affecting them pretty severely then with, with things melting in the far north. Um, actually, uh, their populations are dwindling more so to um, habitat loss because uh, due to po uh, pollution. So that's okay. the main reason. This one but seems to be staring us down. How this come? is Miki. He's just curious. He actually, He's just curious? Okay. He actually lately has been coming up during our encounter programs as well, checking everyone out. So he okay. loves meeting and seeing new visitors. And does so. he want us to pet him or does he, he just wants to see? He's just looking. Okay. He's curious. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. What we'll do is we give a couple of two toots on our whistle. We'll put these shapes in the water. Okay. Every animal has a specific shape. They'll go swimming around looking for their specific shape. And they know shape. their color and yep. shape. That's amazing. Yep. They actually don't know their color. Color. They just know the shape okay. because they are colorblind. Oh, I so, see. Oh, are they? Okay. Yep. Um, so we'll just start in just a minute. She's a smarty. <laughs> she already knew. Oh yeah, she is big. <laughs> she is a big girl. She can actually kind of bring about half, half of her body out of the water. You want to throw them? There you go. That's fantastic. <laughs> so how do you teach them to do that? Just um, rep repetition with food? We actually, we teach them in several different ways. That was probably trained through a, a process called targeting, where we okay. use our hand or a buoy as a target that they're supposed to touch, just like this. <laughs> and I heard they can actually inflate that part of their, their head. That they can inflate it? Um, they, they can change the shape of their face. They can change the shape. They do have um, a muscle in there that they can move. Oh, that's phenomenal. <laughs> they also um, use that melon for echolocation as well. So um, what they'll do is signals will go in, uh, sorry. The, uh, they'll echolocate the object, so they'll send signals out, and then the, it'll rebound at whatever object that they're echolocating at, and that um, those that echolocation will go back through their lower jaw. Sorry, Cindy. That's crazy. And um, they'll get a 3D image in their brain, so just like a bat, kind of. Yeah. Thing. So. Are you a bat, though? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have a dorsal fin, they have something different than that, right? That is true. One more time, we can do it. They have a dorsal ridge. Right. And so, so what, what's the difference for that? What, what, why have they evolved that way? Um, because they actually, since they live in the Arctic, they use this dorsal ridge right here. You can go ahead and touch it if you yeah. want. Oh, oh. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so, so rubber and, feeling. Yeah, and they'll use this ridge to help break through a hole in the ice. Really? Is it like... It's very is cartilage it, is it, is it, <laughs> it just, so, It's just cartilage. Right? Yep. All right. Wow. Good job, Lee. Excellent. What are they communicating when they make noise? They're an animal that, that well, we all know whales Their talk nicknames? a lot. Talk, yeah. right? But Their nickname is actually Canaries of the Sea. Um, they can do several different kinds of vocalizations. Um, Naya, she does a couple, so I'll show you a little range of her vocalization. <laughs> Good girl. And now are they communicating with that or are they just making noise and do well, different that, sounds have different meanings they kind can, of thing? definitely um she also does click sounds like it's coming out of the blowhole that's it exactly is? correct okay. it's coming out of the blowhole and they can uh, move that blowhole to make those different sounds right um so is any noise coming out through the throat or is it all the blowhole then it's all through the blowhole interesting 
They also, uh, one thing about belugas is, um, you can see I've been tickling her tongue. Yeah, okay. They love their tongues tickled. How do they know not to, to chomp down? You can actually go ahead and tickle her tongue if you want. Really? She's yep. not going to bite me? They actually I, love what it. What do I do? Do I just... Just go ahead and give her a little tongue tickle. Just rub it. Yep, excellent. <laughs> They actually love that. It's one of their favorite things. Really? And we think that it might be because a lot of times in the wild, they will um, suck in sand and blow it out. And that coarse feeling on their tongue, mm -hmm. they might enjoy. Huh. All of our belugas really, really love that. And from a young age, they often um, will offer up um, us to rub their tongue. That's great. So it's kind of cool, yeah. I see you're feeding her a, a lot of fish. Yes. How much does she typically eat in a day? Um, they can eat anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds of fish a day. Oh so our largest male, he eats about 60 pounds a day. Good job, lady. And do they... I, these fish are... No, and they're dead. You can see that she has... Her teeth are all really blunt. They're not really yeah. sharp. And that's because they don't use those teeth to chew. They just use it to grab a hold of the fish, and then they'll swallow it whole. Swallow it whole. So to them, it doesn't does it matter if the fish is alive or dead. It, it just it all tastes the same to them. Exactly. Okay. Definitely does. So I got to ask you with the, the killer whale thing that happened not too long ago, do, do, are you at all fearful doing this now? Um. Well, we don't have killer whales. Right. Well, here, I, so. I'm sure these are a lot more friendlier, um. but hence, there's no killer in their title, right? But. But. But still, uh, doing a similar job, it must it must kind of change the dynamics a little bit for you. I've been working with uh, beluga whales for a long time, and I'm very comfortable around these guys. Um, I can't, I've never worked with killer whales, and mm -hmm. we don't have them here, so um, I wouldn't be able to say. Right, fair but, enough. But with these guys, I'm very used to them, I'm very comfortable around yeah, them. Yeah, there's no fear at all. Um, but working with any wild animal, we are always aware that you right. know, things could happen. Um, and I think, you know, anytime working with any wild animal, you have to know that. Um, there's always a danger. Animals can be unpredictable at times. Mm -hmm. So, but I've been here for six years, and I've known to, I've known these animals for a long time, um, and I have a good relationship with them as mm -hmm. well. So I'm very comfortable around them. Do you always work with the same one, or do, or do you do you get to we, one, play with them all? I guess. Yeah. One great thing about the aquarium is that we get to. Um, we actually have, usually when you're a senior trainer, you work all the animals. Um, and up until that point, you have certain focus animals. Naya's been, she was one of my first uh, whales to work with. So I've been working with her for a very long time. Mm. You guys are old friends. Yes. So what got you into this? How does, I mean, this is a dream job for most people, I would think, getting <laughs> to play with these with these creatures. It definitely. So how, how do you get yourself into this? Um, well, me, personally, I always wanted to work with animals. I love animals. Um, and, oh, can you come here, Lindy? So you do this kind of thing every day or every couple of days? We do it several times a day. Re oh, so they're really... Yep, they're really used to it. And actually having you out here with me is great for her. Um, it's Why great is for that? her to see new people. She's part of our encounter program. Okay. Oh, so people can actually come and, and meet her. Exactly. Okay. And it's also great because if we ever have a veterinarian out here to take a look at her or um, for any reason, she's used to having extra people right. out here. So it's really great practice. <laughs> can you stretch it? Hey. Oh my goodness. So back to how you got into this. What, what kind of schooling did you take? I actually, most of the trainers here have a bachelor's degree, but you can have more. Right. And um, the most in, common In biology, degree, or is yep, there a marine um, biology program? Most common degree is the biological science. Psychology okay. is also really popular. Interesting. Um, because we do use positive reinforcement, and yeah. um, when you take psychology classes, they talk about a lot of positive reinforcement. Let's say goodbye, because our session's almost over. Okay. <laughs> um, 